Hello everyone, welcome to the Common Sense Academy. Today we're going to take a look at a video of a sovereign citizen who went into a courtroom to defend a trespassing citation and he ended up getting thrown in jail by the judge for three days and being held in contempt of court. I did an analysis on this video a couple of weeks ago and this sovereign citizen uh, must have seen some of the criticism. I don't know if he saw my criticism. Um, but he reposted his video and now he includes uh, some clips of laws and some language to try to defend his actions and prove that he was right applying these fake laws. So I'm going to go ahead and do another breakdown of this basically to rebut his incorrect claims. Uh, the original video will be in my description. You can check that out. This was posted by Van Bayon. Van, thank you very much. But you won't need to see that original video to understand and enjoy this one. I'm Joe Pometto, Joe the Lawyer. This is the Common Sense Academy. We take a look at sovereign citizens, First Amendment auditors, and people behaving badly. If you like my content, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Also, sign up for my email list. You'll get a free PDF on a history and examination of the sovereign citizen movement. Also, let's do our ritual the same time sit before we begin. I know I've been on Dunkin' Donuts a lot recently. Uh, that's because I'm too lazy to make my own coffee. Is that a thing? I don't know. Dunkin's right around the corner. <laughs> Raise your cup, your glass in the air. It tastes better when we sip together. Cheers. Mm. All right, let's have some fun here. Timothy Cook, CR 53420. Thank you. All right, good morning. Top of the morning. All right, on February 1st of this year, you were arrested and charged with trespassing and resisting arrest. Do you understand the charges? No, I do not understand the charges against me or the nature and cause of the actions against me as well. Okay, so do you need me to read your tickets to you? No. Um, I do need to demand for a jury by trial. Uh, denied. Denied? Yeah, okay. under Nevada law, you don't get a jury mm -hmm. trial. An issue of fact shall be tried by a jury if a jury trial is required under the Constitution of the United States or of the state of Nevada or by statute. This court intend to try me under a criminal action or... All right, I got to stop right there. Uh, he, he's just completely wrong with this little clip that he pops up. First of all, uh, the earlier language that he showed was just the process and procedures of an arraignment. He flies it by the screen. We can't even read it. Don't know what he's trying to say there. Then he talks about, uh, then he posts a little, some language there about a consensual request for the, uh, the complaint or the citation. Well, that's what he gets. You get a piece of paper that lays your charges out. The judge is there, will explain it to you if you ask. Okay, so nothing wrong with the arraignment, nothing wrong with his consensual request. Um, and then he claims that he has the right to a trial by jury. He asked for a right to a trial by jury and the judge refuses it. There will be a little more language on that going forward. Here's the thing, that the language that he said, that he read says that you will get a trial by jury if, if, if is a key word in everyday life and under the law, if, okay? That means you only get the trial if these requirements are met. I mean, he read this, he read this, okay? He read this. You only get the trial by jury if it's required by the United States Constitution or required by Nevada law. In this circumstance for a trespass charge, which is a misdemeanor, it is not required by the United States Constitution or Nevada law. If he did a little bit more research, he would know this or if he understood what the word if means. All right, I, I've covered this in prior videos. A jury trial is only required if you can go to jail for longer than six months. So the crime for which you were uh, you were charged must carry the potential penalty of six months plus one day at least. Now this judge will say, uh, uh, you know, in Nevada, if it's a misdemeanor, it's a minor offense. 
Okay, you don't get a jury trial. That's not technically, well, I don't know all Nevada law. The classification of misdemeanor or felony or summary or whatever is actually irrelevant in this analysis. The only thing that matters is if you would go to jail for longer than six months, six months in one day. I, I, you would not go, there's no potential for you to go to jail for longer than six months in one day for this particular charge that he is facing. Therefore, you are not entitled to a trial by jury under either the United States Constitution or Nevada state law. Dude, come on. You need to understand the word if. Civil yeah, action. under the Nevada Revised Statutes. This court's not trying. This court is not. Yeah, I mean, it's under Nevada Revised Statute. Did you read the ticket? It's um, all there. I just wanted to know if this court was intending to try me under a criminal action or a civil action. It's criminal. Criminal, yeah. because the Constitution grants me the right to a trial by jury no. with all criminal actions. No, no it does not. There are factors that sitting here. You referenced the North Las Vegas case that went to the U.S. Supreme Court. You guys remember the name of that case? So the judge asked for the case there, and he's going to say that there was a case from Nevada that went to the Supreme Court. Uh, there's two cases, Baldwin v. New York, 1970, out of the United States Supreme Court, and then United States v. Noctegal, 1993, United States Supreme Court. They lay out the law. You must, must be facing more than six months and one day. There was a case from this court that went to the U.S. Supreme More than Court six that months. Uh, misdemeanors are petty offenses and they're not entitled to a jury trial. Mm -hmm. um, your Honor. So, but anyway, so, no disrespect, uh, Your Honor. Uh, yes. Uh, listen, Mr. Cook. Blanton. Blanton. Yes, sir. What? Blanton. Blanton. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, today is an additional arraignment. I mm -hmm. ask the questions. You don't ask the questions. All cases in which there may arise a question of validity of any matter under this chapter shall be advanced as a matter of immediate public interest and concern and be heard at the earliest practical moment. Number one, that law that he just cited is for civil procedure. The Nevada Rules of Civil Procedure, that means civil court only. So it at, those laws actually have no applicability in the criminal court at all. Zero, none, no jurisdiction, fake, doesn't, not fake, I'm sorry, just doesn't matter in this courtroom at all. Number two, the thing that he meant, the thing that he read just had to do with the speed and efficiency of the courthouse and that the court will try to bring you to trial or try to get you your case as soon as possible. He's here on his arraignment today, okay? If he wanted a non-jury trial, he probably could have had it that day. So what he was citing there is completely irrelevant, has nothing to do with what's happening in the courtroom here. I could hold you in contempt and I'll incarcerate you for contempt. Do you understand that? Your Honor, I am simply trying to grasp an understanding yeah, of the well, nature and cause well, of the I actions said, against me. If you have certain questions about the understanding of the charges, I don't mind reading the charges to you. But I need to make sure that you have a copy of the ticket. I need to make sure that the uh, spelling of your name is correct. That your uh, date of birth of August 31st, 1998, is that correct? Is that, that was the day I was born. Was that? That was the day I was born. Okay. All right. Okay, and the name spelled correctly is Timothy Cook. Cook is the tribe I come from. My family calls me Timothy. Yeah. When the defendant is arraigned, the defendant must be informed that if the name by which the defendant is prosecuted is not his or her true name, the defendant must then declare his or her true name or be preceded against by the name in the indictment information or complaint if the defendant gives no other name the court may proceed accordingly but if the defendant alleges that another name is his or her true name the court must direct an entry thereof in minutes of the arraignment and the subsequent proceedings on the information, indictment, or complaint. 
may be had against the defendant by that name referring also to the name by which the defendant was first charged therein. Okay, so I'm not really sure what his point was with this name stuff. Number one, this name stuff is procedural. It's not going to be substantive. It's not going to bug them. It's not going to bug them off from prosecuting your case. They just want to keep accurate records. Number two, all that law is really saying is that if you have if you have multiple names, okay, they can list multiple names under which to prosecute you to make sure that they get the right person. There's no favors that's going to be done for you under that law. It's a procedural record keeping thing. It's just to make sure that they're they're prosecuting the right person. And I can tell by this gentleman's reaction that they have the right guy. A natural person? No, that's no, my listen, name. Listen, we're not going to do this. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're going to follow my procedures today. Am I under your jurisdiction, oh, sir? Yes, you are. Is there a signed contract? No, okay. Okay. Listen, I told you before, if you interrupt me with these uh, silly questions, I can hold you in contempt up to 25 days in jail. Do you want that? Your Honor, I wish not to do that. I'm simply exercising my rights. No, no, you don't have a right to, to forestall this proceeding today. Your Honor, if I may, no disrespect, it says inside Article 1, Section 3 of the Nevada State Constitution, the right of trial by jury shall be secured to all and remains inviolated okay. forever. All right, officers, your Honor, today. I've already answered your question about I want, the Sir, you're not resist. I'm not resisting. I'm not resisting. I wish not to be in contempt. I wish not to be in contempt. Your Honor, I haven't done anything wrong. Yes, you keep interrupting me. Sir, I want to have an understanding. I don't understand. I answered the question about jury trial. You don't have a right to jury trial. Your Honor, you uphold the Nevada State Constitution because in Article 15, Section 5, it says that. So we're going to recess court right now. All right. So he here, he claims that the judge is not doing his job and not living up to his oath, which is to the United States Constitution. I have to say everything that this judge did was constitutional. He's living up to that oath 100%. And I just need to say that um, he spelled felonious wrong here. And there are other misspellings in this video. And I can understand one or two mistakes, but uh, come on, man. You want people to take you seriously, take a spelling course. There's no proper due process. No proper due process. Record means information which is inscribed on a tangible medium or which is stored on an electronic or other medium and is retrievable in perceivable form. I have no idea why he's citing that. Irrelevant. Then Mr. Cook became disruptive in the court process or proceedings. He attempted to take control of the court proceeding. And then he began to resist the. Uh, So the judge there, after he had him put in the, the bullpen to go down to the jail, is making a record. That's why he cited the record stuff. The judge is making a record, stating his reasons for why he put him in jail. Again, complying with the law, the Constitution, and his oath of office. And now this guy is saying that uh, the, the sheriff or the judge should be charged with kidnapping. Look, getting arrested and thrown in jail is a bit like being kidnapped, only uh, it's, per it's, it's perfectly legal. In the courtroom, uh, I did warn him several times that uh, I'd be asking questions so we can get through the initial arraignment, he refused to cooperate with the court. Whereas in Nevada Rise Statute 22.030 declares that when the contempt is committed in immediate view of presence of the court or judge of chambers, it may be punished summarily, which in order shall be made to the sight of facts and supporting such immediate view of presence. 
judging the person proceeded against the general of contempt, and he's punishes there and described him. This has happened on the third day of March. Disorderly, contemptuous, and insolvent, had insolent behavior towards the judge while he was not following court, engaged in judicial duties. He conducted a breach of peace, boisterous conduct. He became violent in a manner when the bailiffs attempted to put him into custody. Uh, in such conduct, he became court, derogatory to the authority of the court. He's, the judge is not practicing law from the bench. He's doing his job. The contender is here resident to the following punishments. Imprisonment for three days. So, Madam Clerk, what we're going to do is we're going to exonerate this bond today. I'll go ahead and set bail at ten thousand one hundred forty dollars, which is Tuesday. So, we're looking at. So let's go ahead and schedule him for in custody session on Thursday. wasn't Wasn't a mistrial. I like I said, I had a. Um, he was just fine with me. I had a, a nice, normal conversation with him in the city. Um, Made an offer and he said he was going to accept it once the offer is. So there was special time for both counsels who wanted to resolve the case today. She was one day. Okay. He's got two days jail and two days credit. He does have one more day to serve on the seven charge. Alright, so alright, how are you gonna plead the charges with credit time served? Um yeah, you can explain that to me so I have like you don't have any classes, there's no suspended the case are closed, you just you get out and you move on. Um, move on with life. Okay. If a plea of guilty or guilty but mentally ill is made in written plea agreement, the agreement must be substantially the form prescribed NRS 174063. If a plea of guilty but guilty but mentally ill is made orally, the court shall not accept such a plea or a plea of nolo con tetera without first addressing the defendant personally and determining that the plea is made voluntarily with the understanding of the nature of the charges and con consequences of the plea. Okay, that's about all the uh, good stuff with the video. As far as his plea, so what happened here was the judge brought him back in a couple of days, had him plead to that trespass charge and give him time served. What a plea is, is when you tell the court that you're guilty and therefore you bypass a trial. Oftentimes you get leniency if you decide to do that. Um, the judge, you know, asked him real quick if he wanted to take a plea. He agreed. Now, he popped some law up there which said if a plea is in written form, it must comply with another section of the Nevada State Code. Uh, his plea was not in written form. Therefore, it didn't need to comply with uh, the, the, the Nevada State Code that requires certain requirements um, if the plea is written. So he did an oral plea. An oral plea 
uh, only only thing the court has to do is make sure that the defendant, and this is in the law that he just put up there, okay, must make sure that the defendant understands the charges the of the charges of which he is accused, uh, the consequences of the charges for which he is accused, and it must be made voluntarily. What happened here was you could hear the lawyer, probably a public defender, had explained to him the plea, the plea offer, the consequences, etc. At the same time, you hear the prosecutor who says they're willing to resolve the case that day. So the prosecutor and the defense attorney got together. Defense attorney talked to this guy in there, made sure that he understood the charges, the possible consequences, and that the plea was voluntary. Then when they come in, the judge only has to say a couple of things in order to accept the plea. So it, it appears to me, again, that the court complied with the law as far as having this guy plead guilty or nolo, it's nolo contendere, which means no contest. That's what this guy actually pled to, which means you're saying you're not admitting guilt, but you're saying that there's enough evidence that the prosecution could have beat you at a trial. Therefore, you're accepting the conviction. Okay, so it's not as it it's not a straight up plea of court. Some people prefer to do no contest. Uh, you can sort of maintain your innocence that way um, because you're still getting the conviction. You're saying that they could convict you at court, but you're not straight up admitting to the crime. Um, Generally, I, I believe guilty pleas are preferable for a whole lot of reasons that I don't want to get into. So again, every law that this guy cites in this video is directly in, con like the court complied with all of them. Number one, all the laws he cited, the court complied with. Number two, his, his interpretation of the law was directly incorrect. Okay, just completely wrong. Um, he, I don't know how you can read something and then and then decide that it is that's not what you're reading okay he chose a fake and alternative understanding of the exact words that he read so he doesn't come out looking any better after this response video he just comes out looking worse uh the court did their job did it constitutionally did it correctly and this sovereign citizen went to jail because of his shenanigans. Thank you for tuning in to the Common Sense Academy. I hope you enjoyed this video. My name's Joe Pometto, Joe the Lawyer. If you like my content, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Thank you.